in this example we are going to design the packet generator ip which takes as input 128 bit stream data um, and gives us output 128 bit stream data but with a last signal so the function of this ip is to take the output from the rftc ip and make it suitable for a dma transfer so we want to take the output of the rftc ip and store it in memory for which we require a dma and DMA requires a last signal. So we are going to make this IP with a reconfigurable number of uh, packets. So we can define a packet size. And uh, when the RFTC IP gives output, this IP is going to take uh, the specified number of packets and then generate a T last signal. So our first step is to launch Vitus HLS. Go to create project. We don't have to uh, specify any design files or any test bench right now. We'll add it later. Here we can define the board. Go to boards and then search for RFSOC 4x2 click on ok if the board does not show up when you try to add it then it is possible that the board files are missing you can download them from github or, or any online source right click on source new source file You can select the folder that you want to save this file in and give it a name. So this is the header file. Then we're going to add a CPP file. also going to add a test bench file so first we're going to write the header file we are going to include all the necessary libraries like apxi stream data ap int and hls stream Next, we are going to define the data width, which is 128 bits. So the RFTC IP gives us output 128 bits of data. And this IP is going to take uh, input as 128 bits. So this IP has two input ports and two output ports. Uh, one is for real data and one is for imaginary data. So it takes 128 bits of real data and 128 bits of imaginary data. So our um, signal is a complex signal. Next we have to define a stream transfer packet. So we define um, APXIS packet with data width number of bits which is 128 bits. And these are some extra side channels like uh, T user and T ID which we are not going to use. Next we can put the function declaration for packet generator. This has one variable packet size. So this is the configurable uh, packet size that we can give to the packet generator. And uh, like for example, we want to collect 32 samples of data, then we can give packet size as 32. Then we have uh, four HLS streams. Uh, one is for real input, imaginary input, and similarly one for real output and imaginary output. This is our header file, we can save it. Next we're going to code the pgen.cpp file. Our first step is to include the header file. Next we are going to 
copy the function declaration for packet generator from pgen.h so our next step is to define these ports so we are going to go to the directive tab then we can save this file so that is going to make these uh, variables appear here we are going to right click on pgen insert directive go to interface source file and we are going to choose x ax axi light so this is an axi light port which is going to be used to configure our packet generator ip which means uh, this is the port through which the packet size value we can we can send it to the ip next we are going to define the port for the packet size variable so we'll right click on this insert directive interface source file and this is also saxi light then input real this is a stream port so right click insert directive interface now we for this we're going to choose axis this is a, because this is an axi stream port similarly we are going to define the same thing for the rest of the ports so either we can do the same procedure right click and um select all the parameters or we can just copy and paste this pragma so we can select this pragma and copy paste it three more times and this is input real we can do the same thing for input imaginary we can do it for output real and we can do it for output imaginary right so so all of our ports have been defined we can save this file and then we can see that the changes appear here So our next step is to define the stream packets for input and output data, and we can define two variables called buffer data real and buffer data imaginary. So these are going to store the input value, and then this value will be read and written as the output. Uh, so they are 128 bit values because our data width is 128. So now this is the main functionality of this IP. we want packet size number of samples to be read from the input and written at the output so first we are going to read from the input ports and store them in the local input stream then then we are going to take the data of the local streams and store them in our local variables called buffer data real and buffer data imaginary then we are going to define the data of the output stream as the values in these variables next we define the t keep signal which is this signal is generally a redundant signal and by default its value is all ones which means that all the bytes of t data are valid and have to be transmitted but in this example we have observed that we have to uh, define the value of t keep explicitly so we set it to minus 1 which means that uh, in signed bits it means that all the bits of t keep are one which means that all the bytes of the t data signal are correct and need to be transmitted then we define the last signal which is the most important signal in this ip so this uh, defines that if in this iteration we have reached the last index of for i then the last signal will be generated 
then we write our local stream to the output port so this is it we can save our file then we go to the test bench here also the first step is to include the header file then we can start with the main function so first we are going to define some local transfer packets and stream ports then we are going to declare a packet size and give it some value we are also going to define our uh, input arrays of test data so these are 64 samples in them and uh, we are going to call the IP to only transmit 32 so this is going to test if the IP is transmitting only 32 samples or it is transmitting more or less number of samples we can initialize the arrays with some value so next we are going to define the input data write it in the input stream and the input port and we are also going to print it for debugging purposes then we are going to call the function for packet generator and we are going to pass all of these variables to it then we will read the data at the output stream and print it and we are also going to print the last signal to check if the IP is working properly so ideally after 32 samples we expect a last signal right so this is our test bench and we can save it then we are going to run a simulation So here we can see that our input data was the arrays that we had initialized. Right, so this is 64 samples of data. And this is our output data. This is the real data and this is the imaginary data and the last signal is 0. and after 32 samples we see that the last signal has become 1 and since we had sent 64 samples of data so after 32 samples the stream is empty there is no data being transmitted because the last signal has been received so these warnings are expected and correct so next we are going to go to project tab and we are going to define our top function so we can go to project settings synthesis and we'll define our top function here so next we'll run the c synthesis here make sure that the board selected is correct right so our design has been synthesized next we'll run the core simulation to test our generated RTL code here we can go to dump trace and select all so this is going to uh, generate a waveform of all of our signals and it is very important for debugging so our core simulation is complete we can click on this icon which is open wave viewer and we can see all of our signals here we have to design top signals look at C inputs and C outputs so 
so here we can see the data being transmitted this is our input data we, we can change the radix to unsigned decimal same for the output data so here we can see that the input is being sent so real data is 1 and actually data is 11 which we initialized and this is the packets are being transmitted Right, and 32 packets are transmitted because even though our um, input arrays were 64 samples, our packet size was 32. So only 32 packets have been transferred. Here we can see the output data. So there is a delay between the input and output of two clock cycles. Here we can see our output data. This is 32 samples of data and the T last signal has been generated properly at the last packet and here we can see our valid signal that is also generated correctly. So we can go back to our code and we can export this design as a Vivardo IP. So we can go to export RTL. We have to specify an output file location. Click on OK. So now our IV design has been exported and then we can import it in Vivado to create a block design.